Well, my name is Tori, T-O-R-Y, Robeson, R-O-B-S-O-N, and I am a chiropractor. That's my identity. I'm known as Tori the chiropractor. Who wouldn't know? It wouldn't matter if you went to, uh, to the boat launch where I launched my boat. I'm known as Tori the chiropractor. I've got to call uh, some place to redo a furnace and a property. I'm Tori the chiropractor. I'm always known as Tori the chiropractor. Tori and chiropractic, they're mixed into this one thing. That's my identity. I also get known as the guy who helps uh, new chiropractors get started in practice and uh, the guy that you call when your practice is flatlined and you want to turn into an ultra succeeder. I get known as that guy. I get known as the guy from Minneapolis. I get known as the winner's edge guy. I get known as the guy that makes all of my people carry around one of these. I get known as the guy with the cool chiropractic training center. But I also get known as the guy with the Dobermans. Now, when I look at a picture like this, I can think a lot of things. I can think about young chiropractors needing training and discipline to, to grow up smart and, and capable. I could also think of chiropractors that lack training, lack discipline, crap all over the place, all right, and might, be, and might not be the biggest credit to the breed, but that's a different story. Those exist everywhere. But I look at a picture like that, and actually what I think is, I just wanted to show you a picture of one of my cool dogs. That's actually what I wanted to do. Now, Shifting gears, there we are. We have to start with the foundation here. Now, regardless of where I talk, and I don't know where you're coming from, I don't know how, see, uh, I don't know where you're at, so I gotta start with the foundation here. I'm always shocked at how uh, these uh, lack understanding in the chiropractor's mind, but chiropractic owns three words. We own three words, there are words. These words are so unbelievable, they get taken for granted, they get lost sometimes, not taught well in schools, commonly, but we're gonna own them in this room, aren't we? Because when we own these words, these three words set the foundation for our entire career as a chiropractor, and that first word is chiropractic. In fact, we kinda like it sometimes when it looks like this, right? Chiropractic, what do we mean here? Everybody knows this. Chiro hand practice, the practical use of the hands. Is that not unbelievable? And we own that word, that is the name for our profession. We have the best named profession ever, ever with that word chiropractic. I am a chiropractor. I don't put hashtag doctor, hashtag therapy, hashtag what? I put hashtag chiropractor, and my practice is chiropractic. And because of that foundation, it sets the tone for so many other things to go right in my life. Now, when we look at chiropractic, we see cool things like this. And who in here has ever seen this? This is the very first chiropractic testimonial. Let's take a look and let's read this together here. I was deaf. I was deaf 17 years, and I expected to always remain so, for I had doctored a great deal without any benefit. I had long ago made up my mind to not take any more ear treatments, for it did me no good. Last January, Dr. Palmer told me that my deafness came from an injury in my spine. This was new to me, but it is a fact that my back was injured at the time I went deaf. Dr. Palmer treated me on the spine in two treatments. I could hear quite well. That was eight months ago. My hearing remains good. Harvey Lillard. Is that not unbelievable? Now, the reason I brought that up, yeah, that is something, is it? That, it's some story. It's some story. Now, people look at it like, oh, that's like Jack and the Beanstalk. No, no, that's Harvey Lear. That was a man who was struggling, and he was helped by a, mind, a guy named D.D. Palmer. Now, what's interesting about this, and the reason I want to put this up there, is this guy right here. Okay, what do we know Reverend Samuel Weed for, and he's not Cheech and Chong's long-lost cousin? Okay, who is he, what is he known for? Right, he has helped, he is uh, instrumental, uh, D.D. Palmer, in helping coin the term chiropractic. How cool is that? Now, I bring this kind of stuff up because our understanding of the chiropractic words and chiropractic history, see, those who want to be the best at what they do want to know as much as, they, as much as they can about their profession. That's where I stand. And I love that, the history and the philosophy and the terminology and all these things. I want to have a depth of understanding. So when I speak anywhere, even with people that are already going to agree with me, maybe the medical world and people that are going to be questioning, I'll be sitting with the foundation going, I know so much more about what I do than you do about what you do. You don't have any chance. You have no chance. Subluxation. Here's our word number two. Subluxation. What an incredible word. I ask students the definition of this all the time. Uh, juxtaposition of vertebra, joint space disrelationship, and all this textbooky stuff. But let's just look at this word and how incredible this word is, and this is our word. Subluxation. Sub, less than. We don't have time to really develop it fully, so I've got to be quick. Sub, less than. Lux. What do we got there? Huh? Help me. Light. Light. How do you spell the word cough? C-O-U-G-H. Light. Light and life are exactly the same thing. 
Okay, shun, there's a physics term in here. See that ion, state, stator motor, the state of less life in the body, subluxation. That is our word, is that not incredible? And there are chiropractic colleges that I will walk into and you won't even find that word, but that is our word, we own that. Chiropractic, subluxation, and of course, speaking of subluxation, check this out. This was back when chiropractors had you know what. This was an ad, this was an ad, unbelievable stuff here. I mean what I say in print, as much as if I wrote it. In other words, since it's printed, it means as much as if he hand wrote it. What an interesting way to look at it back then. We wouldn't think of that today, but that was, that was something. There. But here we go, look at this. Here's my favorite thing. Look at his hands. This spine needs fixing, so does yours. Here are some of the keys on which I play in removing pressure from pinched nerves, thereby allowing nature to cure dis-ease. Chiropractic adjustment makes it possible for nature to cure all diseases. Solon Langworthy. Okay? What's Langworthy uh, partially responsible for? The word subluxation. Subluxation has been coined and, uh, and been credited to the great Solon Langworthy. What else do we know about Langworthy? And this gal right here. Who's this? The great Minora Paxson. Her and Langworthy author the very first chiropractic textbook called Modernized Chiropractic. Unbelievable, I have a copy. Of course, every time I try to read it, this is what happens. Because I got these super athletes that go, Dad, let's go out and play for the seventh time today. So I sit back to read my Modernized Chiropractic, unbelievable, and of course, a few seconds later, I've got uh, Indy the Doberman going, Dad. All right, but that's just the way it is. I get used to it, right? Keeps you athletic. All right, so moving on. Now we own this word, adjustment. Incredible word, incredible word, this word adjustment, okay? And of course, adjust meant, meant, mental, mental impulse, adjust. Adjust meant mental impulse, okay? Chiropractic, subluxation, and adjustment. Are those not incredible? We own those words, we're proud of those words, we stand for those words, we embody those words, and we deliver the goods each and every day with everybody that comes in contact with us, okay, because we understand what we're there to do, and of course, we want to be incredibly good at it. Next is this. This, I'm going to show you next here very quickly. Uh, the three smartest things I've ever learned. Number one is the story of my eternal salvation, number one. The second most important story ever told to humankind is the chiropractic story of brain, okay, power to body, body back up. But I want to take it one step further. I want you to really understand this concept. Really, really understand how amazing this is. A thought exists in your mind. Your mind is not physical, it's not part of your brain. There's no tissue that makes up your mind. Your mind is like outside of your body. Like when my body dies and my brain you know, turns to dust, my mind and my entity, my person carries on. So we have thoughts, and there's a point where a thought enters a single brain cell. And if that thought is clear and it has enough power, it will put a grip on that brain cell and cause that brain cell to start to do what that brain cell does. And that brain cell will formulate a mental impulse and there will be a propulsion. When you turn a flashlight on, what makes the light go? What makes a, a mental impulse propel? It's an unbelievable thing. There's a transmission of that mental impulse from my thought, guided by innate intelligence, down that nerve, of course, to the appropriate tissue cell, causing that tissue cell to go into action. If that message gets there full and full power, causing other tissue cells to go into action, the incredible coordination, information back up, we have this chiropractic. It's an unbelievable thing, this safety pin thing, that you only find at life sitting outside the building I talked at last time. It's an unbelievable thing, we take it for granted, but it, when you really think about what's happening, it is mind-blowing. That story right there is the second most important story ever told to humankind, and we own it. We own it, and we own it flat out. Now, the next story would be this, and it ties in with this, but this is how everything happens in your life. This is how you create everything. Your life and everything in it right now has been caused by the diagram I'm going to show you next. This should be familiar to a lot of you, but maybe it isn't. So let's take a look at it like this. This is you. We have a conscious mind and a subconscious mind. Okay, in our conscious mind, we have thoughts. We think about stuff, 50 to 60,000 thoughts a day. 
Now the problem is, of course, we got the uh, internet, we got the TV, we got news, we got all of our, our thoughts are trying to be controlled. People are trying to get you to think what they want you to think because they know how this works. They know how the human being and the human mind works and they want to get you controlled. You can't even go to a gas station now without having a radio blaring or some video doing something. You can't even buy gas in peace because they want to take every second of your day and program you to do what they want you to do and behave the way they want you to behave and buy what they want you to buy. But we want to use this to our own advantage, so let's understand this. We realize we have thoughts. Now, we have thoughts consistently enough and boom, they will start to get embedded into our subconscious, causing our feelings, causing our habits, causing our conditioning. You've got a little kid uh, whose dad plays football, and that kid sees all kinds of football stuff, football thoughts, football talk. He's probably going to have some positive feelings about football if that's the way he grew up. Okay? Habits and conditioning. And those carry on all the way to the point where they actually guide the actions of the person, bringing your results your conditions, your circumstances, and ultimately your environment and the four key areas of life. <coughs> There's only four areas of life. Love, health, career, and money. Love and relationships, that's where all the spiritual stuff is. Love, health, career, money. That's everything in your life. And by the way, when we make goals, like I was showing you here, in fact, on the back, that's love, health, career, and money. So make sure we got everything complete. Your love and relationships, your health and your fitness, your career and practice, your personal financial situation. You can break your goals down into those four categories, and just by doing that and getting that clear in your mind, your life will skyrocket into change. Now we have, of course, the six intellectual faculties of the mind, memory, will, perception, imagination, or reason, and intuition. Don't have time to talk about those today, but I want you to understand this. Your thoughts, ultimately, consistently enough, control your actions, what are controlling every single thing in your life. And so every single thing in your life is coming from your thoughts. So we have to be very careful. We have to plant the correct thoughts in our mind. So notice the parallel here. If we have thoughts that go into brain cells, and that, is, that information's got to go down, which can be jacked up by subluxation. The messages back up can also be jacked up by subluxation. So of course, the chiropractic need is 100% to 100% of the human beings on Earth. But also, when it comes to achievement, very similar process. Thoughts go in. Those thoughts, of course, engage the brain cells. The brain cells go into action, and they cause everything happening in your life. The volume that you see, your financial situation, who you attract to have around you, your overall level of health and fitness, what you ch you've chosen every single bite of food you ever put in your mouth. And that ultimately came from here, came from your thoughts. So when I learned this, and I learned this from the great Bob Proctor, uh, many years ago, I was at a seminar, came out, bought some audio set called The Success Puzzle. I went, whoa, this completely changed my life. Along then I heard it from Earl Nightingale and Claude Bristol, these other great teachers in the past, all telling the same story, the master key, the science of getting rich. And I thought, whoa, and once I learned this, I thought, you mean me, the kid who grew up in Montana, the divorced family, no affluence around me, very, very average, um, you know, uh, didn't really think I had a chance to really do anything uh, that spectacular because I didn't see any of that around me growing up. Once I knew that, hey, you mean if I just start shoving what I want into here, it will start to automatically change my life? And the answer was yes. And the same is true for you. We lock those goals in. You carry them on your person. You hang around successful people. You have the proper affirmations. You have the proper coaching and training. You read the right books, watch the audio. I've got 7,000 minutes of audio material. I've got 10,000 minutes of video. Just finished the fourth book. Fifth one will be done by the end of this year. It'll be the CA, the team book. You put that stuff into your mind. There's no way you can't become a chiropractic ultra succeeder in just a man or a woman of power and influence. And, it, it, and change and all these things that you really want to have. This is what I'm encouraging here. This is what I'm encouraging. All right, how are we doing for time? Oh, how much time do we have, Alicia? Gobs of time. Huh? Now he's going to give me a couple extra here. We might just go all afternoon because I want to see you go back and never be the same again. You cannot go back the same person. You can't go back. You can't go back the same. You got to go back and go, this is the beginning of the rest of my life, and I, I, got, I can do more and have more. One quick thing here, then I'm going to move on to the next thing. Here I am, and I'm here also because, of course, we got this life vision, which is incredible. And I'm also, uh, uh, you know, known as the guy that works on all these fighter people. I'm here for UFC 236. And, um, and uh, quite a few years ago, you know, people talk about the vision board. I said, I don't feel like making a board. I'll just pull up a Word document. And I'll just go cut a bunch of pictures off, and I'll stick them right in here. So I put a thing that uh, you know, the Roman Colosseum, and of course, everybody puts a beach on there, especially when you live in Minneapolis. And of course, I'm going to put a couple good-looking girls on there, and I'm going to put whatever on there. And I put a UFC logo, because I wanted to go to one of those sporting events. I put a picture of Arnold on there, because I like to meet my hero from when I was a kid, right? All right. 
And they put these pictures on there, and sure enough, you meet Arnold at the cool thing in Columbus, Ohio, like a lot of us have, right? And then you end up going to the beach, and you end up uh, walking through the Roman Coliseum. And the next thing you know, I'm at a sporting event for the UFC. Now I've worked on uh, three or four UFC champions, and hopefully another one on uh, Saturday night. The point is, again, I shoved the thoughts into my head. Hey, I want to be involved in this, and my whole point with that is I should have thought bigger. Instead of just going to the event, I should have said, hey, I want to work on a champion. I had a student on the line the other day, and he said, uh, well, I want to have my practice, and I also want to work on uh, horses. And I go, that's really cool. As long as you focus on your practice, you build a big practice, then as an accessory, then you can have the opportunity to go do this stuff with the horses. Don't focus on the horses. You'll, you'll go broke. It's not possible. Your student loans are too big. It doesn't make any sense mathematically. Let's build up a big practice, and let's have you become known separately as the person that works on the horses. I said, why don't you set a goal? Let's write it down right now. Let's put it in your phone for you to work on someone who races, a horse that races in the Kentucky Derby. Then I thought, wouldn't it be amazing to work on a horse that won the Kentucky Derby? Why not? Why not? It's just, it's no more difficult for the universe to bring you that than just to bring you a person who wants you to work on their horse. Why not? Let's think big. Let's think big. Let's think bigger than we're currently thinking. Okay, that's my whole point here with this. All right. You know, it was maybe 1,000 or 1,200 years ago in what would be known as South India. And there was a gentleman who worked very, very hard. He was also very fortunate. And he was able to acquire some land, build a nice house, acquire some more land, beautiful wife, family, and started to acquire a significant amount of wealth to the point where he was like the wealthiest person, the wealthiest family, the wealthiest man in that whole part of planet Earth. His name was Ali Hafid. Now, Ali Hafid had a little function over at his beautiful home, quite a few people there. And there happened to be a gentleman who, in this case, happened to be a rabbi that was speaking with Mr. Hafid and said, well, I would guess that with all your tremendous holdings, you, you probably own quite a bit of silver, yes? And Hafid says, well, of course, I have uh, significant amounts of silver. Well, if you have silver, then I would have to assume that you also have gold. And Hoffman says, well, yes, I have, a, I have significant gold holdings as well. Well, if you have silver and gold, a wealthy man like yourself, you must also have diamonds. And Hoffman goes, diamonds? And the evening ended. People walked away singly, couples, families. Hoffman goes to sleep. He's going, diamonds, huh? I don't have a single diamond. I've never even seen a diamond. Hmm. He gets up the next day and starts a little search, looking for some diamonds. And the search starts to take him away a little bit, searching for diamonds. And then all of a sudden, his uh, beautiful property is starting to get a little bit of disrepair as he goes farther and farther away, thinking, if I just keep on searching, maybe the next day will be the day that I find the diamonds. Maybe the next country will be the place that I find the diamonds. He's not having any luck. And he keeps on going to the point where, you know, his clothes are becoming tattered. He loses his relationship. He loses his marriage. And he keeps on thinking, ah, if I just keep looking, I can score and have diamonds. I can truly be wealthy. And he keeps on going to the point where he loses all of his property. And he finds himself a couple countries away with nothing. The white beard, the sunburnt skin, skinny, malnourished, starting to feel bad about himself and what had happened. He's lost it all. And he finds himself on a beach. On a beach, he's looking out at the ocean. The sun is coming up. And he stands there on the beach. And he goes, I've wasted everything. I've lost it all. I'm, there's really not any reason for me to be around anymore. And he starts to walk down the sand as the gentle waves were crashing and the water coming up like this and beckoning him in and the fingers of foam pulling him, pulling him in and beckoning him back to the womb from which he came. 
and in he goes up to his ankles in the cold water, and he keeps walking in. Yeah, this is the only way, and the cold water is up to his knees. Yeah, there's no reason. There's no way I can go back. My fa two and no, there's just this is it. They're better off without ever seeing me again. And it's up to his waist and hits the tender spot. And if you're a guy, you know what I'm talking about. And he keeps on going, and he gets up to where that cold water gets up around his heart. And all of a sudden, the sun reflects off the water, kaboom, and just lightning bolts in his eyes, and that sharp, bright light, like these spotlights in mine, caught his eyes and the cold water around his heart and he kind of starts to shake and think and he goes no no I got to go back one more time I, can, I can't end I got to go back one more time I cannot end it like this so he starts to work his way back he starts to migrate his way back a camel right here walking there trying to eat what he can along the way he's nervous he's afraid the incredible embarrassment the shame and he finally makes it back to the edge of the property that was once his and he walks up to his old house and he knocks on the door. A gentleman opens the door and he says, my name is Ali Hoffed, and I built this house. Would you be so kind as to let me maybe just come in and remember a few of the great memories I had here years ago? And the guy says, oh my goodness, it's Ali Hoffed. Honey, you'll never believe who's here. Come in, sir, please have a seat. Would you like something to drink? Honey, it's Ali Hoffed. Yes, please have a seat. We'll be right with you. And into the kitchen they scurry to get something for him to drink. Ali Hoffed sits there on the couch and uh, they, you know, he says, would you like some water? Would water? Yes, water would be fine. And he sits down, and he looks at the kitchen table where he and his wife would laugh, and his kids. They look around the living area where his kids would run and play. All these memories just swimming through his mind through all seasons of the year. He looks over to this stone fireplace that he built with his friends. And he looks above the stone fireplace and he sees this clear stone. Guy walks back in, sir, here's, where did you get that clear stone on the fireplace mantle? Oh, we find those, my kids find those back behind the shed all the time. You know that stream that runs back there? They like to play back there. They find those clear stones back there all the time. We don't really know what they are, they're kind of pretty. We've got a couple buckets of them out in the shed if you want, if you want to see them. It had become, it ends up becoming the great Golconda diamond mine. 12 million carats have been mined out of the Golconda diamond mine. And we're talking 50, 100 carat diamonds and all the rest. What's the whole point? Everything that we already need, we already have. Except for, of course, maybe some Winter's Edge audio sets, all right? <laughs> Who wants one on uh, our communication and persuasion? What to say to answer all the help? Right back here, hand first. I got a couple more things to say, but let me get these babies out. Hold on, where was it? Right there. Okay, who wants another one? Who's a student? Student, student, where? Right here? There you go. Hold on. Back one. Who wants to improve their PVA? PVA is a critical thing for the chiropractor. Got to get people to come back to join. Did you raise your hand? Wasn't very convincing. Higher. Higher. Okay. All right, uh, becoming a new patient magnet. Where? Hand. Heads up, nice catch. Um, how to save money, crush debt, become financially free. Of course, our money handling stuff is the best in the history of chiropractic, but most people know that. There you go. Um, how to become a resign re master. Right there, I see that hand, you got her? Ah, it's my boy right there. Let's get back to some PVA, how about over here? Oh yeah, that's gotta work, you can't do that. All right, all right, I see you. Okay, there you go. All right, if anybody wants any of those, you just call us up, we'll be happy to send you one for free. Sometimes I get to the end and I walk away and I go, damn, I forgot to give away the audio sets. Here's the whole thing. Everything that we need, we already have. You've got the intelligence, you've got your eyes, your hands, feet that can move, ability to, to study and to learn and go to successful events like this, hang around real winners. You have the ability to discern and make decisions and set goals. You have everything you already need. You already have it all. Okay? It's simply a matter of being able to apply it. It's simply a matter of realizing that chiropractic is a diamond. Can a diamond be diluted? Can a diamond be punctured? Can a diamond be burned? Can you do anything to a diamond? I mean, really think about how unbelievable this is. A diamond basically says, I'm a diamond. And that's the end of the story. You can't do anything to be it. it. It answers to nothing, nothing. Created by the heat and pressure, a diamond is an unbelievable thing. And chiropractic is exactly like that. Chiropractic is a diamond. 
Unless, of course, you start diluting it and get out of your lane and go over here and do all this stuff that has nothing to do with chiropractic, which we don't recommend. But that's your choice. Student the other day, how many visits would you like to see when you graduate? Oh, I'd like to see 50 visits a week. Let's see, let's do some math on 50 visits a week. You do the math, it's not gonna work out very well. And uh, this gentleman says to me, well, I'm working in an office right now, how's it going? It's going really good, it's going really good. How much are you paying on your student loans? Well, I'm only paying like an income-based thing, like 280 bucks a month. Well, how much is the interest every month on your student loans? I don't know. Well, let me just tell you, it's 1,500 a month. You are failing. You are not even paying your bills. You are failing. You, but you're telling me you're doing pretty good. You're failing. You didn't even know what good or failing even was. We have a criteria in Winner's Edge. A chiropractor can be called successful once they are saving their age. If you're 45, that's saving 45,000 a year, roughly 750 a week after tax, with all your taxes paid currently every week is the way our system works. You're saving money, of course, automatically your age. Your debt elimination plan is in beautiful order, and of course, payroll and team and all these things, and you're automatically giving money away. We recommend that every month. So once you're automatically giving money away, and your taxes are all in order, and the debt elimination strategy is in place perfectly and you see the future, and you're saving your age, we consider then that chiropractor is successful. Not because you saw some volume, or you got your practice open, or you've got a, a Facebook ad, or you run around, you know, and you think that you're, you know. No, success is I'm able to do something that people like enough that they want to come in and see me, send other people to come in and see me, to the point where I have enough people coming to see me that through fair fees and very reasonable payment arrangements, I'm able to generate enough income that I can keep my taxes current, I can give some money away, I've got my debt elimination strat strategy in order, and I'm doing well enough, I'm able to save my age. That's the key. So my recommendation for all of you here is get to the point where you're saving your age. And if you do that, all you gotta do is stay alive in your home free when the time comes down the road when you, know, you don't have a lot of uh, horsepower to maybe be working on people as much anymore. I've gotta make sure you end up successful, you end up healthy, you end up happy, and you end up with a little bit of financial horsepower, and you end up really becoming someone of power and love and integrity. Look what this picture says. Look what this picture says. Discipline, training, but I will promise you, if you look at them the wrong way, or you look at mom or dad the wrong way, it's not going to be pretty. They'll cry when you cry. They'll be sad when you're sad. When you're happy and excited, I'm telling you, they will be happy, excited, like you've never seen. They'll curl up next to you in bed. The dog will never leave your side. But if you're scared, or somebody threatens you, it's gonna be a vicious wall of muscle and teeth. And that's exactly how I feel about my chiropractic. I encourage you to do the same. Chiropractic is it. We own chiropractic. We own subluxation. We own adjustment. We stand for it. We believe in it. We deliver it well, okay? And we defend it well with what we simply call the Doberman philosophy, which, I'm, which is what I'm encouraging you to adopt as we leave here this weekend and head into the rest of this year and the rest of your career. I'm so glad that I had a chance to be here with you. I wish I had more hours to spend. We have so much to do, but hopefully maybe we can have a chance to meet, visit again. Any questions, call me. I am committed to your success as a chiropractor and as a man and as a woman. Thank you so much.